happy morning to everyone welcome to my channel biotech info and today we are going to discuss about the characteristic features of the kingdom fungi we have come across that R.H. Whittaker in 1969 has proposed a five kingdom classification and he has separated all the living organisms into five categories that is Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. So today we are going to know about the unique characteristic features of the kingdom fungi. The first one is it is a unique kingdom and it is going to show diversity in the morphology and the habitat. What is that one? It is going to exhibit a diversity in the morphology and the habitat. Habitat, it is a dwelling place of the organism. Morphology, it is a branch of the science which is going to deal with the external and internal structure of an organisms. So in this organisms which are coming under the kingdom of fungi are going to show an uniqueness, a different from each organism. And now when we have come across with the studies, let us get into one more word that is mycology. What is a mycology? It is a branch or it is a discipline of a science which is going to exhibit the study related to the fungus. Mycology, it's a branch which is going to deal or explain about the fungus and singular form of the fungus is fungi. And next one is, have you, um, uh, mostly generally in our houses, we have seen the fungi. Did you observe it where it is present? Just think about it where you have seen the fungi. Yes, the moist bread, rotten fruits and vegetables and also the generally which we eat the mushroom, common mushroom is an example of the fungi. And what are the different examples of the fungi are puffballs, truffles and also the toadstools. What is the structure of a fungi? The fungi, the first one point we have to know is a cell wall. The cell wall with what it is made up of? Because previously we have seen some are made up of cellulose. But here it is made up of a chitin. Along with the chitin, one more substance is also there which is uh, consisting in the cell wall of the fungi that is polysaccharides. What is that one? The fungi cell wall is made up of a chitin and also the polysaccharide which is a compound of the carbohydrates. And next one is it is cosmopolitan. Cosmopolitan represents that it is going to present in any sort of the environment like soil, air, water etc and you have to know about the differentiation of the ubiquitous and the cosmopolitan just sort it out what is a ubiquitous and what is a cosmopolitan okay the next one is if the second point about the fungi is it is a eukaryotic organism eukaryotic organisms represents that the organism which is consisting of a nucleus and it is bounded with a nuclear membrane right prokaryote represents that it is consisting of a nucleus but it's not covered by the nuclear membrane but here you can see the nucleus or you can even call it as a membrane bound nucleus is present in the eukaryotic organisms and the example now here we are discussing is about fungi and it is a multicellular multicellular represents that the body structure is made up of so many uh, number of cells we can say but there are certain exception in this also that yeast is an example which is exhibiting like a, a unicellular mode of life so here one example we got in the fungus which is showing unicelluloric filamentous structure that is the yeast now next one comes is it is going to show the heterotropic mode of nutrition what is that one heterotropic mode of nutrition means the organisms which they can't prepare their own food material they are going to depend on the other organisms for their food material is going to be called it as heterotropic mode of nutrition in this heterotropic mode of nutrition also we have seen certain organisms related to the fungi are going to exhibit the 
parasitic mode of nutrition and also symbiotic mode of nutrition and also they are certain organisms which are going to depend on the dead and decaying organisms which we otherwise going to be called it as saprophytic mode of nutrition. So here saprophytes which are going to uh, get the food material by decomposing the dead organic substance and also parasites which are going to depend on the plants and animals either it may be the partial parasite or a complete parasite and also you can see the symbiotic mode of nutrition where we can see the mutual understanding as well as a mutual benefit for the both the organism you are going to call that one as a symbiotic mode of nutrition and here we are going to see in the lichens actually what is a lichen lichen it is a component which is consisting of an algal as well as a fungal component right and next one microheza some fungi are going to take the shelter in, in the roots of the higher plants that is going to be called it as microheza and next one is plant see here the with the help of this fungi we are going to get a beneficial as well as it is going to harm the plant and animals like a plant and animals it is going to cause the diseases like in plants it is going to cause the diseases to the wheat that is a rust disease is going to cause to the wheat which is otherwise uh, with the name of the fungi is a paxenia so, uh, tenth one is antibiotics the fungus is going to help for the preparation of an antibiotics and let us get into the story of this how we have got a penicillin injection in 1928 alexander fleming who is a greek uh, what you can say scottish uh, microbiologist and he is famous for uh, in uh, discovering the penicillin injection as as well as an enzyme called as an lysoenzyme in those days what happened is most of the people are suffering with the sore throat which is causing by a bacteria called as in staphylococcus bacteria alexander fleming has discovered the injection for this how means an uncovered petri dish he was kept in an open window after two and uh, two uh, two or three days it was contaminated with the mouths and the mould where the place exact place where that mould is there in that petri dish it is killing the bacteria which is present in it then alexander fleming got an idea and he has segregated that mould and then he comes to know that this mould is killing the bacteria which is causing the sore throat by a bacteria called as in staphylococcus bacteria that's how eureka he has found the injection that is called as an penicillin have you ever wondered that why that bread is getting a small pore like structures and when you touch that one why it is going to show a spongy texture have you got a thought at any time yeah let uh, let me tell you that actually the bread it is consisting of a carbohydrates and sugar and it is going to be like it uh, just imagine it is a bread dough and that dough is consisting of a carbohydrates plus sugar and it is going to have a fermentation process with the help of an yeast i told you that yeast is an exceptional because this yeast is only consisting of a unicellular organism and which is present or which is coming under the category of the fungi and yeast which is commonly we have to call this one as a baker's yeast and here which yeast we are taking for this process is saccharomyces cresivia the name of the yeast which is going for the process of the fermentation for the preparation of a bread is saccharomyces cresivia and this yeast is commonly known as an baker's yeast and this saccharomyces cresivia is going a process called as an fermentation and when it is going to exhibit a fermentation the bread which is consisting bread dough which is consisting of a carbohydrates and sugar it is going to release the carbon dioxide plus ethanol when it is going to release the carbon dioxide the dough of the bread is going to rise right it is going to rise 
and after baking it the yeast which is present it is going to die and then what is going to happen the places where that yeast is going to die it will leave it like that only or set it like that only as a air pockets that air pockets only which we are seeing on the bread now a small spore like structures and which give a spongy texture to us that's how the fungi is not only causing the diseases to the plants and animals but also it is helpful for the preparation of an antibiotics and also the food materials and one more thing let's get into the point of how what is the structure of this fungi okay it is a filamentous structure means what it is having a straight cylindrical filamentous like structure like how the ladder will be there no like that it will be this filamentous structure and when the slender thread like filamentous structures are there we are going to call that one as an hyphae what we are going to call that one as hyphae and that hyphae a network of hyphae is forming what is that like how when you are seeing the fibrous roots or the tap root system how the root heads are going to join and form a network like structure like that only here also a network like structure is forming in the hyphae and that is going to lead the mycelium and this mycelium it is it may consisting of like it is it may consist of only one nucleus or it may consisting of a many nuclei so here what happens is in, in this fungi you are going to see a filamentous structure forming a hyphae and leading to the mycelium consisting of numerous number of my, uh, nuclei in the cytoplasm that's why we are calling it as multi nucleated cytoplasm what is that one multi nucleated cytoplasm why we are saying cytoplasm because cytoplasm it is present in the cell and in that only you can see that nuclei are floating and here that cytoplasm is consisting of a cross walls or a septa what is that one in that particular multi nucleated cy cytoplasm we are seeing certain barriers certain walls present that one you are going to call it as cross walls or septa